over these last days, as it's been said, we've been looking at the power of three, but more explicitly, it can be said that the stories being told have the possibility of us coming to recognize the dynamics, the chemistry of the levels of life that uh, cause and effect level, that level of intuition and the level of interrelatedness or oneness. But put more crudely, we could call those three levels the levels of our street smarts, of our gut feelings and our heart awareness. And if we can come to recognize the interrelationship and how they work together, we can get an understanding of what it is that our relationship with life now is. Or what is that level that is beyond the dynamics of the movements of life. So here's another story that has many of the symbols and archetypes and characters which provide a melange of all the different dynamics that have been in our life and are still in our life. But let's see if we can recognize the meaning of three as it presents itself in one of these many stories that contain <coughs> the threes, not to mention the other symbols and numerals. And this story is about a king and a queen who had three beautiful daughters. Now, they wanted their daughters to be married off to rich princes. And indeed, the first two princesses found very rich princes from other kingdoms to be their husbands. But the third princess fell in love with a poor man. And unbeknownst to her father and mother, she married him. She loved him dearly. But when her parents found out that she had married this unworthy poor man, she was banished from their palace. Now, not long afterwards, the king woke up one morning to find himself blind. Now physicians and soothsayers and magicians of all kind were brought from far-flung places, but no one could cure the king of his blindness, except one physician from a far-off land said that he believed that there was in a place which was called beyond life, beyond the land of no return, to be more explicit. There was a tree, and on that tree there were leaves that could cure any illness. So desperate the king called the two princes of his daughters as their husbands and gave them the task of going to the land of no return to bring back the leaves that would heal him. They were given fast stallions and provisions and they rode off into the distance. And indeed, they did come to the border of the place that was between their own land and the land of no return. But when they arrived there, they were told 
that there was a dragon and a viper that guarded this tree and it was deadly. No one had ever returned from that land. Now, of course, the princes were afraid because they'd been told, unless they came back with the cure, don't bother to come back, otherwise you lose your heads. So the princes stuck there, afraid to go back to their own land. Uh, decided to open a little inn there on the border and they settled themselves there. But it came to the ears of the third princess of the quest that the other princess had been sent on and so she approached her mother the queen and begged her please to allow her husband to embark on this quest to find these leaves. So begrudgingly he was given a lame horse and scanty provisions to go on his quest. But uh, indeed, several weeks uh, later after the princes had left, uh, the poor man found himself on the edge of these lands and came to the inn where the two princes had taken up their residence. Now, of course, uh, they didn't know one another. The poor man had never met the princess, and the princess had never met uh, the poor man. But uh, the young poor man went around the town and asked everyone how he could find uh, the place of no return. And they told him, yes, this is the border between our land and the place of no return. But the only one who knows how to find the tree is the giant who lives in the valley just beyond our borders here. But it is known that this giant devours anyone who enters his territory. But the young poor man, he had nothing to lose. After all, he was a poor man. So he went on his quest and he entered that valley. Now, before very long, he came to a house that was as tall as the tallest building and he knew he'd come to the residence of the giant. When he knocked on the door, the giant's wife said, if you stay here, my husband will devour you. But the poor man said, I'm on a quest to find the tree that gives the leaves that are all healing. And I will not leave until I speak to the giant. Well, she admitted and put him under the bed so that perhaps her husband wouldn't know he was there. But when he came back, of course, when he entered his house, he said, I distinctly smell a human being. And, of course, the poor man had to present himself. But uh, in courteously greeting the giant, he said, Great giant, I know that you are my host and my life is in your hands. But I am here to discover how to find the tree that has the leaves that will cure all ailments. Well, the giant said, since you have been polite to me and brave enough to state your quest, I will tell you how to find this tree. But first stay and let me give you hospitality. 
So the poor man stayed and was given a repast and a place to sleep. And the next day the giant said to him, when you embark, there are three challenges you will meet. First is, you will come to a crossroads, and one way will be the way to happiness, and the other is the way to the place of no return. Without hesitation, you must take the road to the place of no return. And then you will come to a field that is covered with snakes. But if you look at this field and instead of seeing a field of vipers, you see a field of waving grass, then you may pass. And so when you come to the third, you will come to the palace of a queen. This is guarded by the dragon and the viper. Now, if you see the dragon and the viper with their eyes closed, you must know that they are awake. But if their eyes are open, they will be asleep. Be careful and pass when you see their eyes open. Then you may enter the chamber of the queen and there you will find the tree. She will be sleeping because the beasts sleep when she sleeps. You must go to her and exchange rings. And there you will find the tree. Take as many leaves as you can and be sure to put some in your cloak, in your pockets and return the same way that you came, using the same devices. So the poor man followed the instructions given to him, and indeed fulfilled his quest, filling his cloak and his pockets with the leaves from the tree exchanging the rings with the sleeping queen. He returned by the way he came, came back to the inn where the two princes were. They asked him where he had been and he told them the story, but strangely omitting that which told of his exchanging of the rings. And of course, they took it upon themselves to drug the poor man, put him in a sack, and taking the leaves that he had collected they returned to their kingdom, and of course, the king was healed. Now, when the queen awoke, she saw that leaves had been taken from the tree. So she, with her powers, went to find who it was 
who had taken these leaves. So it brought her to the palace where the two princes had been richly rewarded with a third of the kingdom each. And she demanded to know where they had found the leaves. And they said, we found them in a forest and plucked them. The queen, of course, said, these princes lie. And just at that time, the poor man returned with his princess wife, and he was able to show the queen the leaves that he still had in his pocket, and also the ring that had been exchanged with her. So, of course, the truth came out. The two princes who had been wrongly rewarded were not banished from the kingdom, but became subservient to the poor man who became the king's advisor and reached the highest levels, taking over the kingdom when the king was no more. These seeming fairy tales, folk tales, with all their symbolism, their archetypes, give us clues, intimations, implications of the workings, of the chemistry, of the three levels of existence. If we look closely, <coughs> recognizing <coughs> in that crude way that our street smarts, our gut feelings, and our heart awareness, which are those three levels of existence, containing all that they do, the cause and effect, the dreams, the intuitions that arise in that level of spirit, and our heart knowing that interrelatedness and oneness. We know the name of what it's called when they merge, such a denunda. But how does the chemistry work in our day-to-day -day life? How do our street smarts, our gut feelings, and our heart awareness come together to bring about our responses to the experiences of life? In what state are we? We call it such a denanda, existence, knowledge, and bliss. How do they merge? Where do they merge? Our street smarts, we know from where they came. Our gut feelings, we know where they come from. Our gut, we know where our heart awareness comes from. Our heart. Where are they when they all come together? Such a denander. What is it? To recognize it, we have to know how it works. The power of three. The power of three. In all its forms. Look at it in ourselves. See the workings of it. Feel it in every given moment. It's always there. 
we're present. We're watching and seeing body language. We're feeling the people with our gut. And in our heart, we have the empathy and compassion and pity and oneness. Where do they all come together? What is this state with such a Dananda so called? Work out the chemistry, and then we'll be able to know.